Hey guys, this is Christopher with another Onshape tutorial about assemblies. In this tutorial, I'll be talking about relations, which are based on mates. If you want to know how to use mates, you can look at my other tutorial, number 12, on Onshape, on how to use them. And all that we will be doing with the relations is based on the mates. So I'll go ahead and get started using these. Um, after I import these parts that I've made into our assembly. So here we have a base, it's kind of simple, it just has two posts where gears are going to go and then one here for the worm gear. This is a 24 uh, tooth gear, this is a 12 tooth, this is a worm gear, and this is a rack, and all of the teeth should mesh fairly well. I haven't included pressure angles on the gears or anything. They're not supposed to be fully functional, but they can demonstrate the concepts of relations. So I'm going to first insert one of each of these parts into our assembly. Actually, I'm going to put two racks in here. And now we can start using our mates. Um, to assemble these pieces. Um, first I'm going to mount that at the origin and for just a minute I'm going to forget about the rack and, um, and the worm gear. So looking at just these two gears um, we're going to, um, between them, we're going to use the gear relation what this is going to do is make it so whenever you rotate one of these gears it'll also rotate the other one in the opposite direction um, and you can set the ratio of the teeth to make sure that they're spinning at the correct speeds so we need a mate to base the relation off of so we are going to be using the revolute mate Using Revolute Mate will work. If, as long as you have two Revolute Mates, you should be able to create the gear relation. It creates the uh, correct number of degrees of freedom. So now we have our two gears here. They can both spin, but they're independent of each other. Now, with our gear relation, it asks us to define which mates we're using. So just click on both of them. Right now if we leave the relation ratio at 1 and accept, they will both be spinning at the same rotational rate. This isn't correct with gears because this gear should be, should be spinning twice the speed as this one because it has half the teeth. So if we change this to 2, now accept. Now they are meshing properly you can see they might be intersecting a little bit there, but that's just, again, because I don't have the right pressure angles and whatever that I need. Um, but that's not important for this, for this scenario. So now we have these meshing gears. Um, they're related, so when one moves, the other moves. We can also change the direction. I mean, we don't really need to for this because gears should be changing the opposite direction. Um, but if you had pulleys or something like that, which go the same direction, then you could do that. So here is our our gear relation. Um, there's another way we can use that. Here's the worm gear that I made. Um, I'm going to just put it on. Um, Actually, no, I can't use a slider. I'm going to use the, uh, um, I'm going to use the Revolute Mate. That's what I need to use. So, if I select both of these, there. Um, so now we have the Revolute here. Um, and we can reuse this Revolute here also between this gear and that gear. So with a gear relation, I'm going to be doing the big gear 
to the worm gear. Um, and then we'll leave that for now and you can see that now it rotates it rotates not at the right rate but it's rotating at the same time and also if we rotate the first gear it does the same thing now we'll need to change the relation ratio to 24 because when this rotates one time um, our worm gear will rotate 24 times because there's 24 teeth and it still doesn't look right and that is because we need to reverse the direction and now the teeth are meshing properly up here so we can rotate this gear or we can rotate this first gear and they all move together and all the teeth are meshing pretty well so there's two different ways you can use the gear um, relation now I'm going to do the rack and pinion relation so here's the rack and this gear here will be acting as our pinion so we need to have a slider mate between right now we have our base and our rack now this is free to move along here and we already have our revolute on this gear those are the two mates that we'll be basing our rack and pinion relation on. So Revolute and Slider. We want um, Revolute 1 again. And as you hover over it, you can see which two objects are included in the mates. So that's how I know I want Revolute 1 and Slider 1. If I accept, now whenever I rotate this, this um, rack moves also. Again, it's moving the wrong direction and at the wrong rate. So we need to reverse that. And one of these teeth I happen to know is 0.58 inches. So now that's uh, still not correct. This will actually have to be 24 times 0 0.58. There, now it's meshing. Um, because it's 0.58 per tooth and there's 24 teeth. So now when we spin this first gear here, um, this is related to this, and this is related to both of these, so all of them are moving together. So that's the first two mates. We've got two ways, or I guess there's many more, but here's two common examples of the gear relation, and here's a rack and pinion. Um, next, I'm going to do the linear relation. I'll get back to the screw later. That's what I have this second rack here for. This isn't going to be a very realistic example. I'm just going to put these together. I'm going to flip uh, this around. There we go. Now I'm going to make it so when this slides back and forth, this also slides. It's not very realistic because they wouldn't do this unless you had a pulley around here. But I didn't make a pulley, so you can imagine there might be something like that. So our relation, um, linear relation, we need to have two slider mates, and we have that here and here, both involving our racks. And now as one move, the other moves too. They're moving in opposite directions, and they're moving at a one-to-one -one ratio. We can change that. Um, we can make that half and reverse the direction. Now, it's moving slower and in the same direction. So you could have a different type of pulley that, um, that would pull at a different ratio. So that's how linear works. Um, and the linear, it doesn't have to be parallel. Um, you could have this rack running in this direction and the other rack running in another direction. But here in this case we have these running parallel. The last relation I'm going to show you is the screw relation. And I'm just going to use the worm gear here um, and repurpose it. 
So if we get rid of this second gear relation, now our worm gear is free to move. Um, it can't move back and forth because I have it on a revolute. If I delete that and then replace it with a cylindrical, um, then we can do our screw relation. A screw relation is based on a cylindrical mate. So if we create it and select our cylindrical mate, we can see that now this Whenever, whenever we move it back and forth, it rotates, and whenever we rotate it, it moves back and forth, just like a screw. Our ratio is incorrect. This, again, would be 0.58. And now, when we move it back and forth, it is moving along correctly. Actually, this needs to be reversed. There we go. Um, now as we move it back and forth, it rotates um, properly, and when we rotate it, then it moves it back and forth, just like a screw would do. So those are the four relations we have um, between gears of different kinds, um, a gear and a rack, a screw and between two linear motions. This is really helpful if you have moving parts in your assembly um, like we have here. Uh, it can simulate how you want them to move and you can see if there's any intersections between any of your parts and try to fix that in your design. So I hope that you learned a lot about relations and how to use them and if you want to you can go back and watch the tutorial number 12 on the mates um, which the relations are based on if you thought this video was useful please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see the next one make sure you subscribe for that and thanks for watching